Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at getting input from the user. So we're going to take an important step and actually make our program interactive. Uh, so to do that I'm going to use a class called Scanner. So at the moment you still don't really know what a class is but uh, we, do have, um, we do have at least one, well we have a couple of examples of classes here. We've got App and that's a class that we're creating ourselves we've set here public class app, we've created an app and we've also got a system here um, and we can recognize these because they have uppercase first letters these are actually classes and you'll find out what a class is later on we're going to use another class in this video called scanner so I'm going to write something that's going to look quite cryptic but if you type it out a few times you'll get used to using it and you'll gradually come to understand it as you go through the course as with many other things so after the opening curly bracket of this main method I'm going to put a couple of blank lines and I'm going to write scanner with an uppercase s scanner with a lowercase s equals new scanner two round brackets and a semicolon it's the capitalization is very important here you have to get it right and between these two round brackets I'm going to type system capital S dot in and we've still got an error at the moment now that's because I'm using this scanner class which is part of Java it's part of the JDK Java development kit but it's in a it's in a package and um, my program doesn't know how to find this package so to tell it where to find scanner I'm going to um, use a shortcut key. So on the Mac I'm going to do Command Shift O or on the Windows Control Shift O. Um, so uh, I hold down, if I was on Windows I'd hold down Control and press Shift on Mac Command and Shift and then press O, the letter O. O stands for Organize Imports and it brings up this dialog box and I'm going to select this java.util.scanner and click finish and what that does is all it does is it adds this line at the top of my program after the package statement it adds import java.util.scanner and that's saying uh, when we say scanner in the program we mean this scanner and we're going to use this scanner and it's in the java.util package so this uh, what a package is and a class will become clearer to you in time for, for the moment I'm just kind of trying to get used to the terminology let's take a closer look at this line looks a bit cryptic scanner here is a class and we can recognize it because it has an uppercase first letter an S uh, so let me give you a, a little question here we're already um, working with two other classes in this one program and maybe try to maybe pause the video if you feel like it and see if you can figure out where those two other classes are that we're using for, on the basis of what I've just said. Okay, so now maybe you found them or maybe you don't want to pause the video, but I'm going to tell you. So we're defining a class of our own here called app and that's got a first uppercase first letter and we're also using the system class here. And we're using the system class here, it's the same class. So there's, there's two that I can see already here. Um, this here is a variable, it's a variable of type scanner now I've given it, I've also called it scanner, I've given it the same name as the scanner class but with a lowercase first letter some people don't like to do that, they may even argue that this is bad practice to give a variable the same name as its type so both are called scanner in this case I'm a fan of it I think it makes it clearer what this actually is and I don't mind that they only differ by capitalization but if you want you can call it something different like you know um, scan input or some people even call it, call it input um, but I find that a bit confusing here because um, it's not actually input it's a thing that's used for getting input and what we do then is we want to set it to a new we call this an object but we're, we're setting it to, to a new instance of scanner so a class is kind of like a template and an object is 
like a, a particular object made from that template. So we're creating a new scanner object here and that will become clearer also later on. Don't worry about it now. But it's as if scanner is a blueprint or a recipe for making something, maybe more like a blueprint. And um, here we're actually creating a particular instance of that thing. Like if we had plans for making a car um, here in the form of a class and we have a particular car, we create a particular actual car by doing new here. And then we're saying that scanner is going to scan uh, the system input, system.in, and that's going to be input from the console. Okay, let's actually make this work. So what we have to do is I'm going to say um, underneath this, I'm going to say, let's maybe have another blank line and write sys, sys out. Um, enter value in Faren height to convert and let's put like um, uh, one of these characters a sort of um, angle bracket pointing to the right to make it a bit more like a prompt maybe I'll have a I'll have a space there as well and I'll also change this from print line to just print so hopefully the user can type directly after this space we'll see how this works um, so if I run this now, it, it simply outputs uh, some text. And in fact, the result is on the same line, so it even looks a bit ugly. But after this, immediately after the system.out.print, I'm going to write, um, let's write, well, let's actually, let's change this double Fahrenheit. So I'll move it up slightly. And instead of saying equals 91, I'll say equals scanner dot next float and, and as soon as I see the right thing selected in this autocomplete I think I press control space um, sort of instinctively so you type a few characters press control space and this thing comes up and get s gets rid of it so what I want is next float hit return and semicolon let's try that so uh, I'm going to run it and in the console it says enter value in Fahrenheit to convert. I'm going to convert 97, very hot. Hit return and um, we get 97.0 degrees Fahrenheit is 36.1 degrees Celsius. Uh, what happens if you enter something that isn't, um, isn't a floating point value? Let's run it. Well, it's fine with integers. If I write 54 or something, it works. It can easily convert an int to a float, just treat it like a float. But supposing we run it and I enter something that's not even a number, like some random text, we get an error. And in the next video, we're going to look a little bit at that error. So um, for now, try this out for yourself. And if you're feeling creative, even better, make up your own program. For example, make up a program to convert miles to kilometers, something like that. You can find a formula for it here. To convert miles to, miles to kilometers, you just multiply the number of miles by 1.609. So you could write a program that asks the user for a number of miles and converts it to a number of kilometers. Um, and it will work very much like this. Uh, maybe have a go at that and uh, type this out for yourself, I would suggest, first, or just launch into trying to create a program very similar to this one that converts something to something else, but also gets input from the user. Okay, I'll leave it there for this video. Until next time, happy coding.